Father, bless us now as we preach this word of deliverance and as we pray the anointing of escape. Praise the Lord. Satan, you will not win. This is a time of revival for the believers. God, many of us have seen our loved ones where it seemed like they were down for the count, but you blessed them to escape the devil's hands. We here today can testify there have been times in our lives where the devil had us for the count. We were going down for the third time, but by your power, we escaped the devil's hands. So, Father, today, here we are. Here we are. We reminisce. We look forward by looking back. We look to what you're going to do by looking at the things that you've already done. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for every time that you've blessed us to escape the devil's hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. I escaped his hands. The last time in part one of this particular message, we talked about how everything mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse, technically verse 23 through 27, started at verse 16, um, was endured by Paul in the course of church planning and evangelism as he made his boast of his ministry. He had to boast. There were people in the church who were affecting the thinking of the Corinthians. There were members who called themselves super apostles. They claimed to be wiser than Paul. They claimed that they had a greater understanding of the scripture than Paul. They even claim that physically, in appearance, they look better than Paul. They made their claims. And Paul's concern was that as the devil beguiled Eve through his subtlety, that they would be tricked and move from their simplicity in Christ. And these so-called super, or King James says chiefest apostles, they had no problem, they call them very chiefest in verse 5, they had no problem boasting on themselves. Some people's most, the greatest subject is themselves. They can lose a loved one and talk about how bad it made them feel, and how it happened to them and what happened to them. You want to open the casket and see who's in there. Because it was somebody else that died but they wrapped up in themselves. Amen. These guys were, I mean, they were wonderful. If you didn't believe it, all you had to do was ask them. It was all about them. And they were making inroads. And Paul says, I hate to do this. He starts chapter 11. He asks the people to forgive him of his folly. And you see the same thing in verse 17 and uh, in verse 18. He did not want to brag on himself but sometimes sometimes because people can misrepresent you you have to tell the whole story because we are living in a day where no matter how good you may be to people to a person to a family no matter how good you may be, all that stuff can be quickly forgotten and erased and treated as though it didn't happen simply because you wouldn't let them do something that you couldn't let them do. 
most people who view someone who is there for them 80% of the time do not view the 20% that they can't be there as them letting them down. Amen. Most people have more sense than that. But we're in a day where you can give a person 99 yeses and say no one time and they forget all of that. And all they remember is that no. And they're mad with you over that no. Even if the no was a deserved no. Paul preached out the church at Corinth. God told him there are much people in this city. None shall, shall be able to set on you and hurt you. And he went there and he warned them to the Lord. These super apostles were Judaizers. They cared nothing for those people's souls. And yet, they almost turned the people against Paul. So Paul said, you know what? I don't want to name all that I have done. But I think I need to now, Tom, since they forced my hands, I think I need to talk about it. So then he began to lay out his credentials. From verse 23 through 27, he talked about all that he had suffered in planting churches, in planting the church at Corinth, in winning souls. These, these super apostles hadn't suffered anything. They hadn't planted any churches. All they did was everywhere Paul went, they followed him. And every church he would plant, everybody he would win, they would follow him to try to turn those people against him which is the wrong thing to do. Amen. And so what he said in giving his litany of things that he had gone through, and now keep in mind, this litany was not designed to engender pity. The point of it was, the whole contextual point, is that everything I went through in planning churches and getting the job done for God Every issue, every, every trial, the Lord delivered me. That God is faithful. So in looking back on the things that the Lord had enabled him to suffer, he knew that he had a tremendous future because God who was faithful yesterday will be faithful today and he's faithful tomorrow. He says amongst the things that he and I'm going to mention this because I highlighted it uh, Thursday night, but I didn't get a chance to talk about it. In verse 24, he says, Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. What was he saying here? According to Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 3, the maximum number of lashes that could be given to a person during a flogging was 40. 40. This, this address addresses the fine line between justice and mercy. Boy, they sure did punish people back then. 40. The apostle says, of these maximum floggings, the maximum was 40. He said, five times. In my church planning and evangelism, five times I suffered 39 stripes. After they whipped me 39 times and my back healed, they whipped me 39 times and said, you better not start another church. He said, after I got well, and sometimes even before I got well, I went and started another. And they did this to me. And the Lord allowed me to suffer this five times. Right there, I could close out and conclude that we Christians have nothing to complain about. I, I don't even want to have a meeting with you. My, my feelings are hurt. About what? Forty-five times, 39 stripes. Of the five, 
Acts chapter 16 and verse 22 records one of them. It says, and the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. In this beating, he got hit with a whip 39 times. Now in our text, verses 31 through 33, this last episode that the apostle mentions goes all the way back. I want you to let your mind run back today to his first brush with being persecuted. Luke, the Gentile author of the book of Acts, noted that the Jews of Damascus were the ones who initiated the plot. While Paul, the Jew, remembered that this, remember this as a plot, that the Gentile governor of the city uh, was a part of. And there was a correlation between the Jews and the uh, Nabetians serving under the governor. In our text, you see where Paul says in verse 32, in Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king. You know, Damascus, most of you know this, was not in the Jewish territory. Damascus was in the Bible, where Damascus is today. Damascus is in Syria. Damascus was 160 miles from Jerusalem. So Damascus was Gentile territory. So it's interesting when you read in Acts chapter 9, when you see that Saul got papers to go all the way to Damascus, 160 miles away, a six-day journey on foot, he really was desperate about stamping out Christianity. I could see the man walking 20 miles to try to stamp out Christianity. But to go 160 miles from the temple in Jerusalem to try to kill this movement, he really wanted to destroy it. So I'm going to show you where when Luke gives his account, Luke being a Gentile, tells us that the Jews played the major role in this. Paul, being a Jew, remembers that the king, Aretas, and the governor were a part of it. Both men's recollections were correct. Acts chapter 9. Turn to it, if you will. Listen to that music. Listen to it. The sound of the pages of the Bible turning. We bring our Bibles to church here at the upper room. I love it. I love it. It's music to my ears. Let me read this to you. It says, and straightway, he, speaking of Paul, preached Christ in the synagogues uh, that he is the son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest back in Jerusalem to Caiaphas. But Saul increased more Increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after many days were fulfilled, look at this, Luke records, Luke, Luke doesn't mention Aretas, Luke says the Jews took counsel to kill him. But they're lying in wait 
was known to Saul, Saul being Paul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and led him down by the wall in a basket. So you see where Paul, when he recalls this, he remember by name Aretas, the king. He doesn't give us the name of the governor. And he says it was the Demasians, the, 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 the Damascan folk with a garrison desire to apprehend me. Luke, who wrote about it, said, yeah, the Jews took counsel to kill him, and they were lying in wait. Paul wrote 1 and 2 Corinthians in A.D. 56. In October of uh, A.D. 34, Paul slash Saul had his conversion on the Damascus Road. Here Paul's mind goes back some 22 years as he reminisces on God's delivering power. You know what happened in Acts chapter 9. Verse 1 says, And Saul, who later became Paul, yet breathing out, threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest. He went to Caiaphas, the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus. Give me papers so that I can leave Israel and go to Damascus. And because in Damas Damascus was part of the diaspora, and there were many Jews living in Damascus. And the word had gotten to him that some Christians, while running from Paul as he persecuted the church at Jerusalem, he learned that some of them had ran as far as Damascus trying to escape. And the, and the wonderful thing about the Christian is, as they ran, wherever they stopped, they would stop and start preaching. So the word actually spread like wildfire. When they decentralized the church as the saints, wherever the saints stopped, they preached there. So Paul wanted to go up there, and verse 2 is, is, is very, very clear on this. It says, and desiring him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. He went looking for any who was a part of a new sect. At this time, they hadn't even been called Christians yet. It was called the way. So he says, if I find any one of this way, I want authority to arrest them and bring them back. Men, women, children, doesn't matter. And bring them back to Jerusalem and have them tried and have them killed. You know what happened. As he neared Damascus, 140, some estimates, a 200-mile journey, he couldn't help but notice the, the, the Damascus skyline. For they had huge towers and huge walls. Damascus is said to be the world's oldest city. For Damascus was a city in Abraham's day. So he neared these, as he, he could see Damascus, the outline of the city against the skyline. And while riding on his horse, the Bible says a light shined from heaven. A light that was brighter than the light of the sun. And that light knocked him off of the horse on which he was riding. And he opened his eyes and he saw the light. And he thought that the light 
was Yahweh. And he said to the light, is this you, Lord? Expecting Yahweh to speak to him. Expecting to be spoken to uh, by the doctrine of Judaism. To his surprise, Jesus answered. Jesus answered and said in verse 5, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. See, he thought with all of his heart that Jesus was an imposter. Saul, being a member of the Sanhedrin, a very religious man, believed with every fiber of his being that Jesus Christ was a mere man, was a charlatan, was not real, and was convinced that Jesus was dead. And he viewed this so-called Christian movement of people who are following Jesus, claiming that Jesus had been raised from the dead. He viewed them as enemies of Judaism. And he felt that it was his God-given conviction to kill Christians and to stamp out this fake movement that's going on. He was blown away. He was shocked to say the least. His whole life had been shattered. All of his previous learnings, doctrines, and ideologies, all of his thinking was shattered when that voice spoke to him out of that light and said, I am Jesus Christ whom thou persecutest. You're not dead? You, you mean to tell me you're real? You mean to tell me I was wrong? But they crucified you. They put you in a tomb. I mean, I heard the lie that, uh, that they said that you uh, had, 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 had risen, but they weren't lying. But uh, they brought witnesses that said your disciples stole your body. How can this be you? So what do you want me to do? Jesus said, first of all, it is hard for you to kick against the prick. What was Jesus referencing? You had just in chapter 7, yes, you had killed, had them to kill my servant, Stephen. Y'all stoned Stephen while Stephen was preaching about me. To silence him, you stoned him. But, and they laid their bloody clothes at your feet. You orchestrated the whole thing. But I noticed that ever since you killed Stephen, you have not been able to shake Stephen. Stephen's sermon has been on your mind. You, you've been, see, the, the prick is the stick that the owner used to guide the oxen. If you want the oxen to go left, you prick him a certain way. If you want to go right, this beast of burden, you prick him. In other words, the stick was the steering wheel. And he said, it's hard for you to kick against the prick. Yeah, this is why uh, Stephen's message uh, is, is still resonating because I'm not dead. I'm alive. Saul said, what must I do? He said, keep going. Go on to Damascus. Go on to this foreign country. And there it shall be told of thee 
what thou must do. And then the light went away. The men who were with him, uh, they saw the light, but they didn't hear the conversation. And when the light went away, Saul, the mighty inquisitor of the Sanhedrin, was blind. So his companions took him by the hand and took him on down to Damascus. When he got there, blind, oh, the, 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 the mighty lion had become a mouse. You can't fight now. You can't see. A Christian could be standing right over there, but you can't see him. And if they did stand there and say, I'm a Christian, you can't get to him because you can't find him. You're in a strange place. You can't, you can't find him. God uh, does as the Lord often do. The Lord, you don't mind if I preach the Bible? God drafted a man. There's a man there named Ananias. See, God told Saul, said, now you go on down there and, and I'll tell you where I want you to go. Go to a street uh, called Straight Street. That'll preach right there. <laughs> Thank God for the rainbow. Thank God for living on Straight Street. I'm going to stay on Straight Street. Do I have anybody glad to be on Straight Street? That'll preach, won't it? He sent him to a street called Straight and said, stay there. Praise the Lord. God, after he sent Saul to Straight Street, God spoke to a disciple at Damascus. A disciple at Damascus, uh, the construction, Ananias, a Jew, a disciple at Damascus. And uh, he said to him, go over to Straight Street. Got a man over there. His name is Saul. And Ananias said to the Lord, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Have you ever been praying and God told you something and you said, oh, no? I have. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. This can't be it, Lord. Go to Straight Street. Go. There's a man. His name is Saul. And I want you to go pray for him. And Ananias said, Lord, we, we, we know this guy. We've heard about this man. Verse 13. Uh, uh, how much evil he hath done to the saints at Jerusalem. God, there are graves everywhere. There are empty seats in the temple at Jerusalem because of this man. Your word declared that this man wrought havoc on the church. See, he, he was an enemy on the church. That is great havoc, great destruction. Chapter 8 and verse 3. He killed many. And now you want me to go and pray for him? The Lord said, yes. Go and pray for him. He said, because, he says, go thy way. Verse 15. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I must show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And then I said, all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, oh, Lord. Whew. Bible says in verse 17, and Ananias went his way and into the house. Woo! And, and putting his hands on him. <sighs> and Ananias, you use the term of endearment. Brother Saul! <laughs> Brother! <laughs> Brother Saul! Verse 17. 
the Lord, even, even Jesus, that have appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. See, because, because he's already saved you. Now you need your sight back, and listen to this, you converts, and you need the Holy Ghost. I think that's what's missing. Some of us need to be filled and refilled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost makes salvation come alive in you. The Holy Ghost will let you walk right, and talk right. The Holy Ghost give you power to overcome. He says, and to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately, look at this, uh, there fell, verse 18, from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Glory to God. And when he had received meat, because he had been fasting, his strength came back. Are you praying for me? Then was saw certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Now, right here, as Luke tells the story, Luke fails to mention what happened after that. Because something happened between verse 19 and verse 20. What do you mean? That's what I mean. You understand words. Something happened between verse 19 and verse 20. And you find what happened between verse 19 and verse 20 in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 through 17. Galatians 1 and 15 says, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me into his grace, it pleased God, verse 16 of Galatians chapter 1, to reveal his son unto me, that I might preach him among the heathen. And when I got saved, he says, Immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went to uh, NC Third Christian Academy. I mean, I went to Arabia. I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Paul went to Arabia. He got away from all of the others. And uh, while he was there, verse 18 tells us he was there for three years. I like what John Phillips said about Paul's time in Arabia. He says, there can be no doubt that Paul's visit to Arabia was in response to a powerful inner prompting by the Holy Ghost. Paul was to be given some of the greatest revelations of truth ever written down for man. His gospel was not of man nor received of man. He needed time to effect fully and systematically change his thinking initiated on the Damascus Road. See, when you get saved, that's why you need to join the church. Come to church and learn. If I, if I could talk to some of, the, some of them, Kanye and some of the others, I would tell them, after you come to Jesus, you don't need to make a record. After you come to Jesus, when you first come to Jesus, you don't need to try to instruct the church because you don't know anything. You need to go to Arabia. You need to go somewhere and sit down and learn something first. That's what you need to do. You, you, you can tell us that the Lord didn't save you, but you can't teach us. Being, I don't care how many records you sold, that doesn't qualify you to be a teacher of the gospel. Nobody is qualified until they're qualified. 
Some of the preachers come, Pastor, I got to go because the Lord called me to preach. I got to go and do it. People don't, my pastor said this, it made so much sense. He said, son, when the Lord calls you, he wants you to come. Not go. Come and do what, Pastor? Come and learn. Come and be taught. And once you've been, you learn and you've been taught, when the time is right, the authority will send you out. But when God calls you, you need to come. I pray that every one of our ministers and missionaries, uh, Dr. McKinney, if I, 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 for a little bit, I'd, I'd rename the academy Arabia. Because all of us need to spend time in Arabia to, to rethink. See, when you get saved, all you know is devilment. Con. You know, most young men, most young men, you learn as a young man, you learn, one of the first things you learn in your relationship with women is you learn to lie. Oh, yeah, y'all know I'm telling you. All of us was liars. If you weren't a liar, you're the only brother who wasn't a liar. The rest of us were liars. Till you get saved, you lie, you lie, you lie. You lie to get what you want. You say whatever you think you want to hear, get what you want. You lie. You, you, straight face and all, hands on the Bible. Lying, just lying. I'll be, I'll be there with you forever. Lying, you know. Oh, ain't never seen anybody like you. Lying, just lying, lying. That's the way you are. But when you get saved, you unlearn that stuff. Brothers ain't the only one who learned to lie. The sisters lie too. Lie with the eyes batted, lie smiling. I was just thinking about you. You're not you after you, you know. I was just thinking about you, know, and you just you just falling for it. Lying, you do not to make you feel that something that a woman can give to make a man think that he's twice the man he is. So you know how to lie. But once you get saved, you you got salvation causes you to go go through a radical change of mind can I get a witness when you meet Jesus you got to change your mind you got to let the Lord it's called the process is called sanctification let him work that stuff out of you that's why when the young man first gets saved you know it ain't time to put him in the pulpit with ripped jeans put him in the pulpit with the wrong colloquialisms and put him up there. No, he or she needs to be taught. They need to be cleaned up. They need to learn the ways of the church. Some of you have been in, the, in church a long time and you still hadn't been to Arabia. You're still trying to do those same things you learned in Jerusalem. You're still like you were. You need to go to Arabia and get that stuff worked out of your system. That's good preaching. That's good preaching. Because some people have been through. Some people have been, some people have been homeless. Some people have been forsaken. Some people have been hurt. Some people have been raped. Some people have, have suffered incest. Some people have suffered all kinds of traumas. Well, once you come to the Lord, now you got to let the Lord help you get past that stuff. Amen. Teach you a new way of living. That's what I loved about the church of God in Christ. When I got saved at the temple. What I loved about it, 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 see, it wasn't like it is now. You know what you all want. See, and some of y'all get mad with me. I'm, I'm not going to change. You can leave, whatever. You get mad because you have conviction until they affect you. Then when they affect you, you want all of us to change and go along with that stuff. You can't do it. You can't do it and be a church. You can't do it. And so what you, what you want to do is you want the, to change. You want the church to go along with your way of thinking. You can't do that. You got to change. You have to humble yourself and say, now, Lord, I don't care if you were a, a professor uh, at Notre Dame. Which they sure got beat last night. It doesn't matter where you are or who you are. When you come to Christ, you are a babe. You are a babe and you got to learn the ways of the law. Doesn't matter if you're a billionaire. If when you get saved, you got to learn the ways of the Lord. Paul had the most impressive credentials of any man of his time, a Hebrew of Hebrews, of the tribe of Benjamin, all that stuff. He said, after I got saved, I had to count all that as dumb. 
I had to count all that stuff as nothing that I might learn the more excellent knowledge of Christ. Now, Paul viewed learning about Jesus as superior knowledge. You hear preachers now, these guys need to be shot. You hear preachers now, talk, they, they talk about other disciplines as though these disciplines are superior to Christianity. You hear preachers, you know, some of these things, the scriptures, the scriptures won't address. Folk need professional help. Oh, well, Reverend, you must, don't see, you must not see yourself as a professional. I am. And there is a name that is above every name. Praise God is above every profession, is above every doctrine that at the name of Jesus. How many knees? Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. There's no power superior to the power that's in the name of Jesus. Paul went to Arabia. Let me preach this and go home. Amen. He had to relearn some things. He returned sometime later with great truths. Had truths for the Romans. Had truth for the Ephesians. Had truth for the Thessalonians in his heart. By the time he returned from that solitude and of Sinai, his essential theology was formed. Great truths about Christ's cross written in the book of Romans. Great truths about the church, Christ's church, written in the book of Ephesians. Great truths about Christ's return, written in the book of 1 Thessalonians, which are the heart of these pivotal, pivotal, pivotal epistles. They were formed and they were fixed in his mind. After they were formed and fixed in his mind, he said out of his own mouth in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 17, the last clause, and I return to Damascus. Now we're back in Acts chapter 9 verse 20 and we pick it up. I told you something happened between verse 19 and verse 20. He says, I, I, I return to, to Damascus. But now, now I return my, my brother visitor, a big guy right there. I saw you when you stood. I, I, man, I was talking about you. I said, look at that big guy right there. Big strong man. Looked like a whole offensive line. <laughs> Glad you're here today, brother. When he returned, Paul returned with something to say. So now, are you with me? Yeah. Now you know the fact that he went to Damascus uh, his arrival, news of his arrival had already caused a stir. He was the grand inquisitor of the Sanhedrin. He was armed with documents desire that, that demanded full cooperation of the faithful in the task entrusted to him. That is to bring the Christians back to Jerusalem. It wasn't every day that an accredited agent of the Sanhedrin would stop by. So it was a big deal for this high-ranking officer to stop by in the first place. And uh, so the uh, day arrived. He read the scriptures in the synagogue. He handed it back to the minister. Everybody was looking at him. Every eye on him. Some gazed with approval, like some of you. And some gazed with apprehension, like others. Everyone expecting to hear him denounce with authority the new sect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He read the scriptures, handed the book back to the minister, people sitting there looking, and boom, he stands up 
and he preached that Christ is the Son of God. Everybody in there said, what? Who? Who? But we thought you came to preach against him. He said, no, 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 no. Jesus. I know what I've been saying, y'all. I know what I did. I know what my previous positions were. But I come to tell you. That, that, that Jesus is the Son of God. Can I get a witness? You know what Paul was? Paul was a one-man day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. You remember when the day of Pentecost and the Holy Ghost fell on 120 of them and the effect that had, well, Paul was one man. One man stood there and declared that Jesus is the Christ and it shook the world. Can I get a witness? Oh, yes, he did. The Bible teaches after he said it. The Bible says, uh, verse 21, and all that heard him were amazed and said, is not this he that destroyed them which call on this name in Jerusalem and came here for that intent and uh, that he might bring them bound to the chief priests? Is this, is this the same guy? Is this the same Paul? Is this the same man? The Bible says, but Saul increased. The more in strength, the more he preached Jesus, the stronger he got. That's a good message right there. And confounded it. He confused the Jews which dwelt at Damascus. Proving. Do you see that? Do you see that? Proving that this is this is the very Christ, that Jesus is Christ. While Paul was making rapid strides, I believe I better wrap this up now, y'all getting bored. Rapid strides in his newfound faith. Somebody hurried back. One of them left there and ran back down to Jerusalem, to Caiaphas in Jerusalem and reported and said, hey, your favorite son, your favorite son, your best inquisitor, ah, your favorite son hath become a Christian. And uh, he's boldly preaching Jesus. And he's preaching the new doctrine in uh, Damascus that you sent him there to wipe out. And when the word got there down in Jerusalem, Verse 23, I'm still in Acts chapter 9. It says, and after many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. They said, we got to kill him. We got to kill him. We got to stop him. This was the Jews. And the, but the Jews knew that they couldn't kill him by themselves. And so they teamed up with the government. Paul remembers in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 32 that the king was in on it. Aretas, yeah, he was in on it. Who was Aretas? Aretas was the father-in-law of Herod Antipas. You remember Herod Antipas? Same man who married his brother Philip's wife. Well, now, here is his wicked uh, father-in-law. Aretas was no friend to the Jews and through some unnamed governor was in on the plot to kill Paul. The governor was in on it. Look at this. The Jews and the Demoseans, the men at, at Damascus, didn't get along, but they teamed up to stop Paul. Praise the Lord. So now they're trying to kill him. We got to stop him. And look at what they did. They said, well, here's what we got to do. We got to silence him. Here's the plot. He must be silenced at all costs. From the king to the governor. And from the governor to the man on the street. Both Jew and Demosians. 
Mm, you got to look out to make sure that Paul do not escape. Oh, Lord. According to the text, <laughs> they shut down the whole city. That is, with a garrison, they shut down the city. And what happened here is the Jews of the dysphoria began to follow the Jews of the homeland. For it was the Jews from Jerusalem who did not believe that Jesus was Christ. And Paul preached to the Jews in Damascus and many of them got saved. But after the governor got involved and after the king was in on it and the government was trying to shut him down, they began to resist the truth of God and they put a garrison up. This Paul said in uh, uh, 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 32 said they shut down the city desirous to apprehend me. They locked the city down. They placed guards everywhere. There were informants everywhere. They put the informants at the library. They put the informants at the bank. The informants was down by the water fountain. The informants were at the grocery store. They were in the marketplace, all of them looking for one man. Ain't God a good God? All of these people trying to destroy this one man. I think I've showed you that it was a Jew-Gentile combination. They'd all joined together to stop one man. And the main thing was we can't let him escape. Oh, Lord, I'm glad today that I serve a God who is a specialist that when the devil says that you can't escape. I'm glad to know that my God is an escape artist. My God knows how to get us out of every situation that the devil says you can't escape from. I heard 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 saying, there have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape. I'm glad today that I'm just like the songwriter who said like a ship tossed and driven an angry sea when the storm of life's raging and the fury falls on me I look and I wonder why God's great fortune seemed to pass me by but I say to my soul so don't worry the Lord will make a way somehow yeah Anybody here who know from experience that he's a way making God to have anybody here who when you looked around and you were trying to get out of your city you were trying to get out of that jam you were trying to get out of that situation every door you looked at that door was closed this bank said no that bank said no the credit union said no the hospital said no everybody said no but you called on the god of the bible and when everyone else said no then god say yes and when the lord said yes he began to open doors he began to make ways do i have a witness here who know that god is He's a God who will give you power, 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 power to accept.
scheme. Power to get out. The devil thought he had me, but I got away by the grace of God. Oh, do I have a witness in here today who can say by the grace of God? Ah, I got away. Three people and say, I escaped his hands. I escaped his hand. I escaped. I escaped. I escaped. Woo! Let me close here. Let me close. Paul in Acts chapter 9, verse 3. While on his way to Damascus. He saw those tall walls. He saw the tall towers. He thought within himself, they'll never be able to get away from me because the city is a wall city. But he didn't know that the same walls that he thought would be used to keep the Christians from getting away from him would be the same walls that God would use to deliver him. Say, yeah, they shut down the city, but thank God, thank God for some saved folk. Everybody's saved until they get tempted. Everybody's saved until it's their loved one. Everybody's saved until it costs them something. But thank God there were some Christians in Damascus who said, even if it kills me, I'm going to help this man. Somebody had a house in the wall and they said, let him come to my house let him hide during the day let him hide we're gonna hide him in a dark place but at night under the cover of darkness bring him to my house they got paul slipping hiding it's dark, it's night. He gets in the room. He said, come on, come on, come on. He goes to the back. They're looking for him everywhere. And somebody cracks open a window. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, the coast ain't clear yet. I see a few of them. Paul standing there waiting. Paul standing there waiting. Angels up in heaven saying, Lord, I'll make a way somehow. Lord, I'll make a way somehow. They looked again, looked again, said, the coast is clear. Do you remember when Jesus fed 4,000? Two little fish, five bottle of loaf. And uh, why am I bringing that up? When they got ready to collect, they put the food in baskets. Oh, Lord, the baskets were huge. That was the kind of basket that they used. Said, I get in this basket, and you're going to have to trust us now. We're going to let you down, down by the wall, down in a basket. I know the string could break. I know the enemy could come, but we're going to trust God. And just believe that even though we're letting you down, the Lord will never let you down. Even though we're luring you, we're putting you in the hands of the Lord. And Paul said, I got to the ground. I got out 
the basket. I ran into the woods. I escaped his hand. I escaped the king's hand. I got away. I got away. 22 years later. While making sure the saints don't get confused about who the leader is. Making sure that the saints don't fall for one of these celebrities in the pulpit. Making sure the saints know who the pastor is. He said, I remember when Aretas and the governor, all of them tried to get me. But at night, through a window, down a wall, I escaped his hand. And the Lord who blessed me to escape then is the same God who will bless me to escape now. I want you, I want you to think on a time when God, when the Lord delivered you. I want you to let your mind, and some of us ain't got to go back very far. Just think on how the Lord brought you out. Think about how the Lord made a way. Think about how the city was locked down. But God did it. But God did it. God did it. And the whole point, I said when I first started preaching, we're going, I said it Thursday night and I said it today, we're going to look forward by looking back. And when you look back and you see what the Lord have done, that gives you some idea of what the Lord will do. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. You ought to count your many blessings. See what the Lord has done. Look over my right shoulder. And I look over my left shoulder. And I see what the Lord has done. You ought to high five someone. See what the Lord has done. religion 
I didn't get it in a dream. Wake me, shake me out of my sleep, and I'll tell you just what I've seen. Wait a minute, Rocky, wait a minute, Rocky. Fix me, Jesus, fix me. Sanctuary, glory, 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 glory. Man, woman, boy, and girl, glory, 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 glory. Yours may be a situation. Yours may be a medical diagnosis. Yours may be a financial condition. Maybe an occupational condition. Whatever it is today, there is an anointing. An anointing to escape. Anointing. An anointing to escape. In the name of Jesus, I want you before I pray to just take out just 60 seconds and just think on what, what the Lord has already done. And that's what Paul was doing. He was going back. Let your mind run back. Hey, you may have to go back 22 years. You may have to go back a long way in your life. But let your mind go back. Hallelujah to the way it was. You know how the devil thought he had you, but the Lord brought you out. Hey, I'm here to tell you, he's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. God told me, tell the church that I haven't gone on holiday. I haven't gone on break. So tell him I'm still a, a delivering God. Tell him I still make ways. Tell him I still open doors. Tell him I'm still a healer. Just serve me and love me. Worship me, give me your life, seek me with all your heart. I'll make a way for you. I'll open doors. Yes, I will. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we come before you right now. Hallelujah. 
God who delivered Paul, God who delivered him, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, his first, his first brush with death, and you brought him out, Lord, they didn't kill him in Damascus, you brought him out, well, you're the same God today, the devil have tried to shut some of us down, the devil have tried to lock every door, the devil have tried to declare that there's no way out. But the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is defeated. God is exalted. And Jesus is Lord. Satan, you are a liar. Satan, we rebuke you. Hallelujah. God, you know how. To raise up the right folk. God, you know how to raise up nighttime disciples. Disciples who won't be afraid when the fire gets hot. Who won't be afraid when the persecution is on. But they'll stand by. They'll stand by and help the man of God. Father, you know how to send the help we need. You know how to build the wall. You know how to open the windows. You know how to make everything all right. Lord, Lord, we receive this anointing. We receive it. Anoint us, Lord. Make us so crazy that the devil can't hold us. Make us so slippery that we can slide out of his trap. Wow! Oh, oh Lord, we thank you. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. For your anointing. The anointing to settle. The anointing to move to the front of the line. The anointing to declare this day. Ebenezer. Up until now, the Lord has been good. The anointing to escape the devil's hands, to escape the devil's plans. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 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 Somebody's coming out. 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 He thought he had me, but I got away. I got away. I'm coming out in the name of Jesus. Coming out. Oh, Lord. Coming out. Coming out. name of Jesus. The anointing of God be on you right now. Coming out. Oh, Jesus. My, 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 my. Matter of fact, matter of fact, the more impossible that it seems, that the louder you ought to shout. Because you'll know it wasn't nobody but God. Wasn't nobody but the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I'm getting out of this. God's going to bring me out. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Of room, praise him. Saints, give him glory. Right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Look at God making a way, mm, making a way, making a way, making a way. Look at him. Making
making a way. Ah, oh, he's making a way. Yes, he is. 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 I don't know how. I don't know how. But God's going to do it. God's going to do it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And don't even look for God. Don't even look for the Lord to come the way that you think he's going to come. Paul didn't even think. He didn't even think that the Lord was going to use those walls to deliver him. But he did, but he did, but he did. You know, you know, you know, I, I love you. And you know what, uh, where's Shekinah? You all are good people. Wanda, Shekinah, bro, you all good people. I'm going to tell you why. Now, this girl's on the altar just crying out to God. Now, the last time she was on the altar, the Holy Spirit moved on me, and I gave her a stiff rebuke. Now, you know why she's here calling on the Lord today? Because she's got good family. The, the family didn't take her home and say the pastor shouldn't have done that. No, they didn't take her home and do all that. Because if they had, she wouldn't be here calling on the Lord today. They took her home, and you know what they did? Even though that's your daughter, your grandbaby, you trusted the man of God. See, that, that, see oh, if we just had more of that. Because I'm going to tell you all something. Some of these battles... Should, the pastor shouldn't have to fight. Because if you know your church, you know your leader, some things should never, I should never even have to address, you should do it for me. And standing right here, you all, oh, oh my, I just anoint you, baby. In the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Look at God, look at God. The Lord's doing something, the Lord's doing something. Y'all praise the Lord for it. God bless you for being a good mother. Bless you for being a good grandmother. The Lord bless you. The Lord's going to bring you out. The Lord is going to provide a way to escape. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ah, the Lord bless and heal you. The Lord heal you completely. The Lord do that part that only God can do. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. God bless this young man. In the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shine the Lord's blessing be on you. Lord's hand be on you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God's got it. God's got it. God's got it. I know you might feel like you're in Damascus. Hey! But there is a wall. There is a basket. There's an open window. Hey, hey. Somebody ought to praise God. Praise Him for your wall. Praise Him for your basket. Praise Him for the open window. Thank you for the wall. Thank you for the basket. Thank you for the open window. Thank you, 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 thank you. Everybody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by a name received. When the storms of life's raging and the fury falls on me, that man said, I look and I wonder why. God's great fortune. Pass me by, but I say to my soul, don't worry, give him praise, baby. The Lord will make a way somehow. Won't he do it when I try to do my best in service? I try to live the best I can. But when I say to do the right thing, oh, he was pressing on every hand. Talk with pain. I wonder what the next day will bring. But I say to my soul, don't worry. The Lord will make a way somehow. And now, say the Lord will make a way somehow. When beneath the 
See you here. 